you are a blessing to people when you're doing that. When you're shaking someone's hand, when you're saying hello to someone, you know, when you're singing up on stage, it's, it's a blessing. So it's an honor to, to serve in the house of God. Um, so as I write my information down, I'd like you to write your information down. We'll just take a minute to do that. Pastor Noriko to give you the tithing message. Good morning. How is all doing? Isn't that stage looking beautiful? Yes. And all, yes, all the girls are pumped but from the weekend still. Okay, this morning there's three ways to give. As you can see on the screen, you can use the envelopes in front of your seat pocket and also on online, which our family does. And then you can also make an FPOS on an info desk. So we've got um, opportunity today, the privilege actually, to sow into what God is doing for his kingdom. You know, we, we bring every week our tithes, which is what God's giving to us on our daily needs. And we give out of that in, in thanksgiving to the Lord. You know, so that God can use and sow back into his kingdom. But this morning, I'm really excited to share the opportunity to sow into the building fund of this particular house. So if I can read from Isaiah 54, verse 2 to um, 3. It says here in the Amplified Virgin, Enlarge the sight of your tent to make a room for more children. Stretch out the curtain of your dwelling. Do not spare them. Lengthen your tent ropes and make your pegs, stakes, farm in the ground. For you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will take a possession of nations and will inhabit desert cities. This is a God actually promised over his nation, Israel and Old Testament. But I was reading this morning and it really God just shown to me that 25 years ago when church started, that the daughters and sons and daughters of this house 25 years ago so into God's kingdom. They didn't have this building. We are standing on generosity of who came before us. And, and God was just really showing that to me. He said, I am a daughter of this house. I've been raised in a spiritual daughter through this house. I've never been to another church. So I don't know what it's like to be another church. Um, and it's God's promise here to say, make room for more children. Yes. Not talking about me having a baby. It's talking about the spiritual children. I love to have it. But I love to have more spiritual children in this house. More sons and daughters for God to raise through this house. So that we can go into the world and stretch out to the right and to the left with a message of hope. Because our world needs to hear there is a saviour. Our world needs to hear there is a hope. You know, we live in a world that's so confused, living in the fear, reacting in the fear. There's a lot of angry people in, in this world, but that God has this message of hope and love that can restore people to Him. So this is why we are... So privileged to be part of God's big plan today. You know, so into the house of God. God's done amazing things in the last 25 years through this house. Beautiful sons and daughters being raised. But next 25 years, more spiritual children to come. And he's going to stretch tent. And I really do believe this is a very special year for our church. Not just to be marking 25, but I really do believe God is going to use every giving stored up in the house for the next 25 years that what he's going to do through this house. So will you join me sowing to his kingdom to spread the message of hope this morning? Thank you, Lord. God, are we just to praise your name. And Lord, are we just to thank you that you are doing amazing things in and through us. But through house of hope, Lord Jesus. God, I wish just to thank you that you're gathering a nation in this house, Lord, to share the message of hope that is in Jesus Christ. And Father, this morning, we take this a privilege with a great heart, Lord Jesus, and say thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us to be part of your bigger plan in and through this house. And thank you, Jesus, that 
We have an opportunity to sow into your kingdom this morning. And so excited to see what you're about to do in and through this house. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand in and worship him as we give. together in God's presence and with one another. We took time to honour some who were very special in our lives. We uh, had some incredible stories, as was mentioned, about God's work in really challenging situations and his breakthrough, which was encouraging. We spent time around his word, but most of all, there was such a sweet presence, God's presence, um, ministering deeply to each one of us. And... Uh, I think we've all come away with a great conviction that we are dearly loved and chosen daughters of the Father. And, and in the Father's house, as we've been singing, there is a place for me and there's a place for you and there's a place for each one of us to belong. And we're so glad to gather together as a family again today in the Father's house as, uh, as chosen sons and daughters. Also, next Sunday is Mother's Day. So, you know, back to back. Uh, thank you, too, for all of the men that really encouraged us and supported us uh, yesterday and Friday night. We had men serving us, and we also had men the children and just releasing us to be able to have that time, and we really appreciate the men in the house. Yes. Thank you so much. We are who we are because you're encouraging us behind us. It's so important and we love you for that and we thank you for that. Uh, yes, next Sunday is Mother's Day. We won't have a 5 p.m. experience next Sunday, just the 10 a.m. We're focusing on the 10 a.m. So please bring not just your mum, uh, your neighbour, your aunt, your cousin, a friend. Uh, we can have a great day celebrating Mother's Day and celebrating again our Father's love next Sunday morning, 10 a.m. experience. Are you ready for the Word of God? Fantastic zeal. All the zealots can go out into the tent and follow the head zealot, Mr. Z. Fantastic. Turn to your neighbour and say you're very good looking. Come on, just say you're very good looking to your neighbour. If you've got your Bibles, I'd love for you to turn to 1 Peter, and we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to ask Peter to come, Peter to read Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. Thank you. 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in licentiousness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, <laughs> 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 
Where were we? <laughs> Verse 3. Here we go. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do. Living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They think it strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dissipation and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Verse 6. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. Verse 7. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love it deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Verse 12, dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you may participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the Spirit of glory and of God rest on you. If you suffer, it should, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. But praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Verse 19. So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful Creator and continue to do good. Thank you, Peter, for reading 1 Peter. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you've joined us this morning and we've just read that entire passage and we are looking at highlights from 1 Peter today and um, Peter's very direct in your face and uh, he's constantly saying this world is not our home and so don't settle down and if you're a follower of Jesus, this series we've been talking about, we are called to be different. Everyone say different. Yeah. Okay, so we're called to be different. Now Jesus promised us many things uh, when we read through the scriptures. Lots of things. But let me just show you first what he didn't promise, okay? For example, he didn't promise that when you started dating another person, your heart would not be broken. Okay? How many people agree with that? Jesus also didn't promise when you went on vacation it would never rain. How many people had rain on their vacation? Okay. You know? And Jesus never promised that his church would be filled with perfect people. <laughs> and Jesus never promised that we would be loved by everybody if we followed him, okay? And so I asked the question, that's not what he promised. Well, what did he promise? What did Jesus promise in 1 Peter chapter 4? Simple. If you follow Jesus, if you live differently... Jesus promised that the world will hate you and persecute you. 
So welcome to Hope Church this morning, where we make you feel really good about yourself. Okay, today, okay, that's the promise of God. So I want to give you an encouraging message that you've never wanted to hear today, okay? This is a message, you just mm, don't hear that, but it is encouraging, all right? So I want to offer you the title of this message is having a different perspective regarding persecution, okay? Perspective. And we're going to start with John 15, verses 18 through to 20, or just the two verses there. And then we're going to jump into 1 Peter. You ready? Yeah. I love this. This is from the mouth, the words 